I'm glad you're here tonight. Amen. Amen. I trust everyone's had a good day. Maybe some of you got a nap. I don't know. I tried, but uh, my, uh, I think uh, I reaped what I sold today. I'm uh, known to aggravate my daughter, and so the whole time I was trying to sleep, I was being aggravated by her. I wasn't allowed to sleep. Amen. That's okay. You reap what you sow. And I, I reaped what I sowed. If you have your Bible, 1 Samuel 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24, and uh, somebody come up to me this morning right after service said, man, you preached way too long, I mean, uh, yeah, way too, uh, way too short, can you preach longer tonight and make up that time, and <laughs> no, hey, look, I hope you got something out of the message this morning. Man, when, hey, when the Lord's finished, I want to be finished, amen. When he's done, it's time to wrap it up, amen. Uh, but I hope you're having a, a wonderful day. Let me say, don't forget, uh, Easter, we're going to take up a special offering. We'll just, everything that day, uh, we'll just uh, take up a, a, a love offering for the uh, wastewater bill. We need to get that took care of. And uh, I want you to be praying about what you can give, and I know the Lord will honor our giving, we, we would love to be able to take up every bit of what we're lacking on that. God knows all about it, uh, but if you would, uh, pray about that and ask the Lord what you can give. All right, uh, 1 Samuel 24, back in the life of David tonight, and I hope you're enjoying the character studies uh, as we're preaching uh, through uh, David on Sunday night and then Sunday school, Joshua, Joseph. How many of you have been learning anything in that? I've been, I've been learning some things, and I'll tell you, it's encouraged me. And uh, so I hope you're in, in, enjoying those studies. Amen. 1 Samuel 24, verse 1. Read, uh, lengthy reading, but uh, it's needful for this evening. Amen. Uh, verse, uh, 1 Samuel 24, and ten, uh, verse 1. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks and the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats by the way uh, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, uh, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, uh, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. Uh, but Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also rose uh, afterward and went out uh, of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord, uh, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said unto Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt? Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord uh, had delivered thee today unto mine into mine hand in the cave, and some bade me kill thee, but mine eye spared thee. And I said, I'll not put forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed, uh, for he is the Lord's anointed, my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Here we go. Moreover, my father, see ye, the skirt of the robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand. 
I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. Last week we preached on the refuting of Saul. I want to look tonight on the retaliation that could have been taken against Saul. Notice your Bible, verse 12. Uh, verse 12 here. The Lord judged between me and thee, and the, Lord's of, the Lord avenged me of thee. But watch this. But mine hand shall not be upon thee. See that? Look at verse 13. As saith the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceedeth from the wicked. But mine hand shall not be upon thee. Father, help us this evening as we look into the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Thank you for the faithfulness of thy people, Lord. Many have prayer requests. Many have needs, financial, physical needs. Lord, uh, spiritual needs. So we're just a needy people if the truth be known. And I pray that thy will would come to pass in our lives. As we look into the Bible this evening, Lord, reward us uh, with sensing your presence. Help us as we endeavor to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. I plead the blood of Christ upon this service. And I ask, Lord, that you would uh, speak to the hearts of those, uh, Lord, by watching, by Facebook, social media, YouTube, Lord. I pray that you'd speak to those. But as for us that are here, Lord, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I'll be in the midst is the promise of Almighty God. And I pray this evening that you'd help us, Lord. We'll love you for it. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Saul had gathered these uh, thousands of soldiers from Israel, and he had set a campaign out to kill David. And uh, the tables turned very rapidly uh, God intervened, if you've been here and you've been able to hear the messages, and uh, God changed things. And, uh, you know, sometimes if we're not careful when God changes things and God works on our behalf and the Lord works on our favor, if we're not careful, we'll get proud. Boy, God did that for me. Now, it's okay to claim and uh, enjoy what the Lord has done for us, but when we see God moving on, on, a, uh, in, uh, on someone who's in opposition to the Lord and in opposition to us, and God is trying to work for, uh, is working for our good, we've got to be very careful about our attitude toward those individuals. Because if we're not, God will, the Bible says God will turn away his uh, judgment off of them. Amen? And, uh, but the Lord here, he's seen every bit of this. And Saul has uh, tried to actually kill David, and God stopped it all. Well, not only did God stop it all, God gave David an opportunity to make a choice. David was given the privilege to rather disobey or obey the word of God. Do you recall that? And he did not, obey, he did not disobey God's word. He submitted himself to the word of God, and he got great victory over the temptation of wanting to kill Saul. He was angry with Saul. Let me ask you a question. How many of you can realize and understand why David would be angry with Saul? I mean, David had been mistreated by Saul. He had been wronged by Saul. And so David had to learn to deal with these internal feelings and this, uh, if you will, this problem about wanting revenge. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody's wronged you, they've wronged God and they've wronged you, and you and I sit back and have the attitude that it doesn't really matter to us whether we get revenge or not, you're lying to yourself. I don't believe that. Now, we can let it go, but it enters our mind. We want to see things done right, and we want to see God handle things right. It's called retribution, amen? We want to see retribution brought when someone is wrong, for example, in politics, I'm telling you, you talking about some things I'd like to see change in politics. Uh, but I want you to notice that David here has the ability to take revenge. He has the ability to retaliate and, and bring to pass every feeling that he wanted to. But you know what David does Look in chapter uh, 
24 and verse 12, David is going to do something that would, would uh, benefit you and I when it comes to have some, someone have been wronged, you and I. Rather than taking revenge, and sometimes we want to, amen, uh, sometimes somebody will say something or do something, bless God, we'll want to stand up. Uh, one preacher illustrated, I'll never forget it, he said, we're like the old snake. If you peck at that snake, he said, that snake will reach out to bite you every time. He said, you never see somebody take and try to irritate a snake and that snake not strike. He said, that's how we are. When someone wrongs us, we're going to strike out. We're gonna... Well, in this case, David has an opportunity to retaliate, but he doesn't do it. Amen? He leaves the retaliation in the hands of Almighty God. What a lesson that we need to practice. Amen? When someone wrongs us, we need to let God deal with it. Retaliation. The action of returning, if you will, uh, uh, in this case, a military attack into a counter, a counter, a counteract. In other words, Saul went and gathered all of his men, uh, 3,000 men, went to, uh, went to search David and try to kill him. And now David has the opportunity to retaliate, but he does not do it. Amen. Why doesn't he do it? He said he's not going to touch the Lord's anointed. Amen. And so what he's going to do, he's going to practice something that's very difficult. Sometimes we need to let God be God and let God worry about those that have wronged you and I. Amen. Just turn to, I mean, the Lord, he comes out here and says, notice what he says in verse uh, uh, chapter uh uh, 24 and verse, verse 12. I mean, this is strong language. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. I'm not going to take revenge. I'm not going to retaliate what David is saying. I'm not going to break the law of God and get right in the same place where you are, Saul. You've wronged me. God saw it. I'm not going to retaliate. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call on the God of heaven, and I'm going to plead and plead, put this case in the very hands of the God of heaven. He saw it all. He'll deal with it all, and God will judge me and thee. The way it should be is what David is saying here. And he's not going to retaliate. Hey, let me ask, ask you something. This is not just an Old Testament doctrine. How many of you ever had somebody, and I'm telling you, I, 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 I'm trying to think of who this was, but somebody had wronged a Christian one time in one of the churches I pastored, and they, man, they were really upset. And I said, now, brother, you just need to calm down. He said, I'm going to get them back. I said, hold it now. No. I said, you don't need to do that. I'm going to see to it, preacher. They're going to get theirs, amen. you got to be careful about retaliating, amen. Why is it that we want to retaliate, amen? We do. Uh, I'm telling you, God doesn't want it this way. And David pulled back and David said, I'm not going to retaliate, but I'll tell you what I will do. I'll call up on the God of heaven who will judge this situation and he'll judge me and he'll judge thee. Now look, this is a New Testament doctrine also. Turn with me if you have your Bible. Romans chapter 12. It's clearly in the word of God. This thing about vengeance. This thing about uh, uh, getting even. Or this thing about when, when we're wrong, bless God, we're going to make sure that we level out the playing field. And we're going to straighten everything out. We're going to call somebody out and level the playing field and just get them back. Hey, man, you better be careful, and I better be careful. Romans chapter 12, uh, Paul comes out, and he lays something out here uh, that uh, I'm telling you is, is uh, there's, there's some wisdom in practicing this. Now, look, uh, it's so easy. This is easy preaching, by the way. When someone wrongs you, and, and, and somebody else gets up and preaches and, and instructs you and I 
to just let it go, turn it over to God. You ought to just obey the Bible. That's so easy preaching, amen? Uh, but that's what the Lord wants us to do. Uh, Romans chapter 12 here, notice verse 17, what the Lord says. Paul instructs you and I. He says, recompense to no man evil for evil. In other words, somebody wronged you and I. Don't you try to get it. Don't you try to straighten it out, amen. I've had somebody, and in kidding I've said this. I've been before in, a, uh, I deal with, a, a, you know, people uh, in business, and sometimes uh, I can recall, uh, and now this is just kidding, I'm just, but anyway, you ought not do this. But I can remember I went out and, uh, I bid a job one time, and it was for a surgeon. And a, a, a surgeon, he, he, he practiced all kinds of different surgery down here in Chattanooga. He lived up on Lookout Mountain. And I, the, you know, he had a little bitty trailer he lived in. It's probably a million-dollar home plus. It was a big, nice, fine home. And he had these big old 16-foot, I believe they were, they were up there, big old columns, Brother Chuck, round columns were big. I mean, they were trimmed in crown mold, trimmed in uh, circular base, if you understand what I'm talking about. This is not a cheap product. And uh, he, uh, I turned the bid in. He said, no, 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 that's too high, way too much, way too much. He said, you do for this. And I looked at him, I said, damn, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, there ain't no way, he's lost his mind. He want me to invest money. And I think it was about $2,500 he was trying to get me to come down on it. I just looked at him, and, and this is probably the wrong way to deal with it, but I did anyway. I said he was, his bill was somewhere around, it was going to be about 6000 He wanted me to come off and, and do it for 2500 You do the math. Uh, and I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, uh, where do you practice your surgery at? He said, I, I practice down here at... Uh, at a memorial and Erlanger, and I said, okay. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll do it for 2500 If you're willing to make me up, sign me up something here to say that if me or anyone that in my family or friends, at any time, if I want to come down and have someone, a one-time situation, somebody to be a uh, practice on or, or you do surgery on, you'll do it for 2500 Oh, no, no, can no do, can no. I said, neither can I. Well, since I started doing that and I saw how it worked, I thought, well, man, I might use that again. And uh, I went into some other people. We do other work business for people. And they'll have, they'll have no problem giving me a bill. They'll have no problem giving me, I mean a big bill. I know one now is, Fixing to pop one in about my hand for about thirty-two hundred. Chew on that for a day or two. And he put that gonna put that bill in my hand. And I, I remember one time I come out and said something like this. Well, he'll need some home improvement. <laughs> hey, what I'm saying is this: we're not to retaliate when we're done wrong. We're not to try to stand up and make things happen and force things to be done right. That's hard for me to swallow because I don't like being done wrong and I don't like people. I don't like seeing people be done wrong. Amen? I don't like it. But what he's saying here is this. Notice what Paul says in Romans 12 here. I mean, this is instruction right from the Word of God. And when we see somebody that has wronged us or we see somebody that's been wrong. We better be very careful about running and trying to straighten everything out. What do you mean, preacher? Notice your Bible. Romans 12, verse 17. Look what Paul said. He says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men, if it be possible, as much as life in the you. Uh, live peaceable with all men, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Uh, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. You don't have to take care of people. God said, he'll, 
And so what, what David was doing here is this. David saw that he could have retaliated. He could have very well took care of Saul. But rather than that, you know what he does? He pulls Saul. When he gets the opportunity to Saul, publicly he looks at Saul and he said, The Lord judge between me and thee. And the Lord avenge me of thee. And what he's saying is this. David don't want, he knows his flesh. And he knows that he's very well capable of killing Saul. Look, if he went out and took care of Goliath, Saul's no issue. Other than maybe the, uh, maybe Saul's not a challenge to David. I personally don't believe it would have been a challenge. If you'd put them both on a field and give them both a sword, I believe David had killed him in a minute. Uh, so Saul is not a, even though Saul is taller, he has the, Nation of Israel behind him. Uh, I don't believe the nation of Israel, uh, maybe some of Saul's men, maybe one like Joab uh, would have got involved. But David, I believe, could have very easily retaliated and killed Saul with no problem. But rather than taking vengeance, rather than retaliating, he calls on the God of heaven and he singles Saul out and he tells Saul, the Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge thee of me, but mine hand will not be upon thee. In other words, I'm going to back up. I'm going to move out of the way. God has saw and heard everything that's been done between me and you, uh, Saul, and now I'm going to put this thing in God's hands, and I'm waiting on retribution. Now look, when you do something like that, I'm telling you, friend, God is going to honor that prayer. And God does honor that prayer. We'll see that here in a few days in the life between, in the life of Saul. Matter of fact, if you were here last week, we talked about how Saul refuted, uh, David refuted Saul. Uh, you're going to find that Saul doesn't want to do things God's way. And God waits, and Saul gets hung on what's called a wall of shame. I refer to it as a wall of shame. All Israel would walk by that wall where the Philistines, friend, they took Saul's head off and nailed his carcass to a wall. And I hear about David getting ready for the palace. Oh me. It pays to serve God. It pays to honor God. It pays to obey God. And so David knew that if he was to retaliate, he would break the law of God by, uh, by touching God's anointed. He knew not to do it. And so here's what he said. He withdrew. Listen to me. David reserved his rights. How many of you ever had somebody sue, do or say something to you? You knew they were wrong. You knew they were out of line. Can I tell you there's wisdom in reserving your right to retaliate there's wisdom in just sometime being quiet, not going any further with it, and let God handle it. Just let the Lord handle it. And did you know what happens here? Uh, by not retaliating, God honors David's decisions. Amen? God honors David's decisions. Why is it sometimes, and I didn't say you, I said us, why is it sometimes we feel that God is up in heaven with a sold up mouth and his hands tied up behind his back and he can't do it? God is very well capable of handling these kind of situations. And David, just as he showed faith to take out Goliath, David's going to take out Saul in a different way. David, matter of fact, Saul, is, Saul probably would have rather been stuck by David than decapitated by the Philistines. He comes out, and David said, okay, the Lord's seen this. God's seen every bit of this. And I'll tell you what, Saul, I'm not going to, I'm not going to disobey God's word and kill you, but what I am going to do, I'm going to call on the God of heaven, and the Lord judge between me and thee. Boy, those are strong words. And did you know what you know what you see here? There's a picture of the carnal and the spiritual man. The spiritual man is calling on God to judge, listen, 
between me and thee. In other words, that spiritual man knows that he's capable of doing things that displease the Lord. And David realizes he was innocent in a lot of things, but he, he, he remembers that when he cut the robe off of Saul's skirt, God saw that. God saw it. God saw how he responded, but God saw him take that skirt off. He saw him cut that. He saw every bit of it. And David said, I'll just put this over in the Lord's hand. And I'll tell you what, I'm calling on God to judge between me and thee. God saw everything, heard everything. And I'm just going to put this on the Lord. And basically what he was telling Saul is this. I'm willing to accept the judgment of Jehovah God on my life for what I've done. Are you willing to do that? Oh, boy. He let the Lord judge and avenge thee of me. But I'll not put my hand upon thee. And did you know what the Lord does? Friend, sometimes God is not only going to judge both. I believe he dealt with David and Saul there. But David was quick to repent, friend. David was quick to repent and get things right. And uh, I'll tell you, there is a, there's a good lesson there. We need to lay, lay hold and cling to 1 John 1, 9 because we are going to respond wrong. We are going to do things wrong through life. Uh, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ought to be quick to repent. Did you know what? The moment we do something, whether it be public or private, friend, listen to me, and we disobey God, we displease God, we ought to be willing to apologize to an individual or to a building full of people. Whatever we've done, if we've wronged someone, we should get it right. Amen. It goes like this. I failed God. I failed you. I'm sorry. Some people can't do that. Saul, friend, is a picture of a man that is yielded to the flesh. He is not going to do it God's way. He don't want to do it God's way. Look at all the time that has elapsed. Look at what God, look at the steps God has taken to prove to Israel and Saul that David is king. Samuel anointed David. And God has gone step after step to show Saul his will. Saul don't want his will. Saul wants Saul's will. And David got frustrated with it. And he not only refuted him, but he comes to him and he says, Hey, listen, this thing's gone on long enough. The Lord judged between me and thee. Watch this. Look, listen to this. You got one guilty and one innocent here. And, and the, the innocent one looks to God and he says, And the Lord avenge me of thee. You know what David's doing there? David is literally praying to God and saying, God, you have seen my patience with Saul. You have seen me bent over backwards. You saw me the other day when I ran out of the cave. You saw me when I stooped down and I wept and I pled with him to get right. But he wouldn't get right. All he's doing, Lord, is he's still going against you and he's still trying to kill me. God, avenge me of him. Now, how long do you think God's going to let that thing go on? And the Lord begins what I want to call the retribution for David. God will end up judging both David and Saul. We'll see that shortly. This is judgment, God's judgment. For the Lord knows that which one is innocent. David wants a friend... David, by coming out publicly, David desires the case between him and Saul to be turned over to God. Now, buddy, I'll guarantee you Saul don't want that. David has come to the point and he said, look, this thing's gone on long enough. God, as a matter of fact, Lord, listen, here's what it is and I'm going to close. 
Lord, would you, re- would you listen to me just for a minute? If you remember, Lord, I was down there at, in Bethlehem. I was down there at my daddy Jesse's house and I was taking care of his sheep. God, you interrupted my life. You called me. You anointed me to be king. And this individual's done everything he can do to kill me and to hinder your will. Lord, avenge me of him. You don't think retribution's coming? (laughs) Oh, yes. Listen to this, and I'll close. Retribution. My, my, my. God will judge. What is retribution? Here's what it is. Punishment. Afflicted on someone as vengeance. For a wrong or criminal act. (laughs) Let me tell you something. When you stand up in defiance to Almighty God and you begin to hinder God's will, God's man, God's church, don't you tell me there ain't going to be no retribution, brother. You're skating on thin ice. And here David is. God had called David to be the king of Israel. He had already set him up. The Lord's fixing to have the the, the triumphant entry. They're going to be dropping down the palm trees just like Jesus and putting David on on the throne of the universe. And I'm telling you, when you get to bucking David, friend, and you're living the life that Saul was living... You better bank on retribution coming. Punishment is coming. It's a crime before Almighty God. It's a crime. It's wicked. It's wrong. And I'm telling you, Saul's day is coming. And what Paul said was this. Vengeance belongeth unto the Lord. Listen to this. I will recompense. David said, I'll just turn this case over to the high heavens. I'm going to let God do this. But you know what David had to do to do that? He had to be willing and honest enough in his own heart that it was very possible he could have done something that was out of God's will. And by bringing God in on the case and asking and pleading with God to judge the case, David was willing to put himself under the microscope of heaven for him and that's what he's saying he said the Lord judge between me and thee God put a microscope on my heart and on Saul's heart look and see what we're doing and when you're finished Lord may I know you'll make the right decision that's exactly what's being said here and you know what in closing One's head's on the wall and carcass is on the wall along with his sons hanging up and dangling in shame and the other sitting in the palace. One dies premature because of disobeying the will. You, hey, take serious what I'm saying. One dies premature out of God's will. Never should have died this way and another one dies in his old age in the palace. That's retribution. God God looked down, and just like he said in his Old Testament, God will not always strive with man. Who in the world sometimes do we think we are to strive with Jehovah God? Who do we think we are sometimes? You know, there are people that do that, though. There are people that do. I don't care. I remember a woman looking at me. She got mad at me up at Beulah Chapel, and here's what she said. I don't care what the Bible said. My daddy didn't do it that way. Yeah, oh yeah. Up there living in poverty on that mountain, Brother Mark. I got to preaching on Easter. Easter's coming. It ain't about no bunny rabbit. I got to preaching on the, on the reality of Easter. I don't care what they say. My child's going to have a basket. Yeah, your child will have a basket on Easter, but you can't pay your light bill the next day. 
Just, oh, just rebel against God's word. Just defy God's word. Oh, yeah, same with Halloween. I remember one looked at me, my, my child going to have a, I, this woman looked at me and she literally said, my child will have a costume. My child will go trick-or-treating. Okay. Then about two weeks later, Brother Mark down at the church begging, can't pay the rent. <laughs> hey, look, it's not the goal to, 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 to make someone wrong. It's not the goal to be mean to people. I'm standing here tonight telling you I trick-or-treated when I was a child. My parents were ignorant. They were. They were ignorant of the Word of God. My wife and I got saved. I remember buying that girl back there and her sister an Easter basket. I remember I couldn't, I couldn't wait. I, we hadn't been saved long. I remember them hunting eggs. But I'm going to tell you something, honey. There ain't no Easter bunny in this Bible. You won't see it nowhere. Easter's about a risen, resurrected Christ. And, and, and yet folk going to get mad and won't get mad. They can't color eggs at the church. Can't put a chocolate bunny in a basket. It ain't about that. It's about the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord. That's what it's about. Take it up with God. And I told one lady who was an eastern star, you can tell that bunch of wicked mess, put a bunny rabbit on the pulpit, and I ripped her down. I said, there'd be no hopping around here. Amen? Amen. It's God's church. Jesus died for you and I. It is the gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which was preached unto you, how that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. I don't read nothing about a bunny there. But it'll get mad at me. Ain't no hopping around here. I shoot that rascal every time I get the opportunity from the pulpit. Don't bring no eggs in here. This is God's church. And it ain't about a bunny rabbit, and it ain't about some doggone wicked Halloween ungodly day. That's nothing, both of them are nothing but wicked tradition. Tradition. And not in this book. That don't mean I don't like chocolate eggs. <laughs> that don't mean I don't like the little, the little bunny can. Hey, look, I'm just trying to tell you. It's, that's not what I've had people literally get mad and leave because we didn't have, are you ready? Trunk or treat. Here's my question. Is it in the book? Is it there? We got all kind of yarn. He can have an Easter egg hunting on here. Uh-uh. Is it in the book? So you know what I started doing, Brother Chuck? The Lord judged between me and thee. I'm going to stay with the book. <laughs> I'm going to let God take this. And if you want to continue to get, be in defiance on Halloween and Easter, I mean, I'm telling you, I saw it firsthand. I saw it. It broke my heart. I couldn't believe it. I'm talking, Brother Mark, people who cannot even barely buy food in, devi in defiance would go out and buy a stupid basket with eggs and sacrifice money and put it on a credit card to get their kids something in defiance to God's will. And you're going to tell me God's in that? No. You don't like that kind of preaching, brother. No, that ain't right. Okay. It's been good to be in the Lord's house. Listen, we shouldn't retaliate. There's some things the Lord just wants to take care of. He wants God is very well capable of taking care of people who are in resistance to his will who are not going to comply to the will of God, God can handle those people. Father, we love you today. Thank you again for your goodness. Lord, we, we thank you for the Bible. As we were talking about in Joseph's life in Sunday school this morning, how accurate 
how solid the Word of God is. And we're so grateful for it. Well, Lord, we never want to be mean or unkind. That's not our goal. But we're going to stand for the Word of God. There's too many that sit down and set aside the standards of the old time, the old paths. And Lord, we love you for what you've done. Bless our church. Bless our people, our country, Lord. Bring, uh, Lord, uh, bring this bus route to pass. Bring this van to pass, Lord. Uh, bless our visitation. Help us as we endeavor to do thy will. We'll love you for it in Jesus' name. Hey Amen. If you brought your Sunday evening offering, Brother Chuck, Brother Brother Paul, one of them will be back there at the back. You're